Galileo Galilei, the scientist who contributed greatly to the scientific revolution of the Renaissance, has been nicknamed the father of observational astronomy, father of modern physics, and father of science. Galileo was born on February 15, 1564 in Pisa, which at that time belonged to the Duchy of Florence. Galileo's father, Vincenzo Galilei, a famous lute player and musician, and his mother, Giulia Amanati, were married in 1562. Galileo inherited from his father the technique of the lute at an early age, the ability to question authority, careful measurement and experimentation, the ability to examine rhythm musically, and to arrive at results in mathematical and experimental ways. When Galileo was young, he seriously considered becoming a priest, however, with the encouragement of his father, he applied to the medical department of the University of Pisa. In 1581, he noticed that a chandelier pushed into harmonic motion by air currents always swayed at the same speed, regardless of the swing distance, and when he returned home, he took two pendulums of equal length and watched them swing for the same time even at different swing distances. Until this point in his life, Galileo was shunned by his family from mathematics because it was a career that paid less than a doctor. However, after taking a geometry class, Galileo convinced his father to let him study mathematics and natural philosophy instead of medicine. In 1583, by order of his patron, the Grand Duke of Tuscany, why does a total of 10 come more often than a total of 9 when 3 dice are rolled? He contributed to the science of probability by publishing reflections on dice games to answer questions such as, he discovered the thermoscope, the ancestor of the thermometer, and drew the attention of the scientific world by writing a book about a hydrostatic equilibrium he invented in 1586. Galileo also studied the concept of disegno, a term encompassing fine art, and became a teacher of perspective and chiaroscuro at the Accademia dell'Arte del Disegno in Florence in 1588. Inspired by the artistic tradition of the city and the works of Renaissance artists, Galileo developed an artistic mentality. While he was a young teacher at the academy, he made friends with the Florentine painter Sigilli and included the painter Galileo's moon observations in one of his paintings. In 1589, he became head of the mathematics department in Pisa. In 1591, his father died and his brother's care fell to him. He transferred to the University of Padova in 1592, where he taught geometry, mechanics, and astronomy until 1610. During this period, Galileo made many important advances in both the basic sciences and the practical applied sciences. His interests also included astrology, which was related to mathematics and astronomy. Cardinal Bellarmine wrote in 1615 that the Copernican system could not be defended without physical proof that the sun does not revolve around the earth. Galileo thought that his theory of the tides provided the necessary physical evidence for the motion of the earth. This theory was so important to him that he thought of naming the book Dialogue concerning the two major world systems earlier as Dialogue on the Tidal Movement of the Sea. The section on the tide was removed by order of the Inquisition. For Galileo, the tide consisted of the back and forth movement of the waters of the sea as a point on the earth accelerates and decelerates as it revolves around the sun. He presented this theory for the first time to Cardinal Orsini in 1616. This theory revealed the influence of ocean basins on tidal timing and velocity. While it was successful in explaining phenomena such as the tidal difference in the middle and ends of the Adriatic Sea, the theory failed to explain the general cause of the tides. If the theory were true, there would only be one method day. But Galileo and his contemporaries were well aware that this was wrong, because in Venice, instead of one, two meths occurred twelve hours apart. Galileo interpreted this error to be due to the shape and depth of the sea. 
Against the claim that this interpretation of Galileo is deceptive, Albert Einstein argued that he developed his fascinating theories and accepted them without question to prove the motion of the Earth. Galileo rejected his contemporary Kepler's theory that the moon produces tides. In addition, he did not accept Kepler's claim that the orbits of the planets were elliptical and argued that it was circular. Prior to Galileo's quarrel with the Church, most educated people in the Catholic world accepted either Aristotle's Earth-centered view or Tycho's view, which was a mixture of Sun and Earth-centered theories. The main problem with heliocentric theories is that, if correct, an annual stellar parallax should be observed, but it didn't exist. Since the distance of a star is directly proportional to the difficulty of this observation, there were no sensitive instruments to make this observation until the 19th century. Although heliocentric theories have existed since ancient times, they were recently revived by Nicolaus Copernicus. Copernicus argued that parallax is unimportant because the stars are so far apart. However, Tycho Brahe argued that because stars have a measurable apparent size, if they were as distant as heliocentrists argued, they would have to be very large and appear larger than the Sun or any other celestial body. In Tycho's system, he thought the stars were just behind Saturn and were the same size as the Sun. No institution at the time denied heliocentrism, and even Pope Gregory XIII used it in 1582 to regulate the calendar. In the years after Copernicus, heliocentrism was an undisputed topic, however, the absence of stellar parallax prevented it from being an accepted theory. For Italians in particular, it was a dangerous thing to oppose the Pope in the wake of the Counter-Reformation and after the events that led to the Thirty Years' War. Some parts of the Bible also supported world-centric theories. Galileo argued that heliocentrism did not go against the Bible. He thought that poetry, song, and ancient writings, the view of St. Augustine, should not be understood as they always were. Galileo wrote that the author spoke of a fixed world system in which the sun rises and sets, and explained motions other than rotation. 46. By 1615, Galileo's heliocentric writings were submitted to the Roman Inquisition, but his main crime was to try to reinterpret the Bible. This was a clear rejection of the Council of Trent and a movement close to Protestantism. Galileo went to Rome to defend himself and his Copernican and Biblical ideas. Early in 1616, Monsignor Francesco Ingoli sent Galileo a letter rejecting the Copernican system. Galileo later thought that this letter started the anti-Copernican movement. According to Maurice Finicchiaro, Ingoli was most likely commissioned by the Inquisition to give its expert opinion on the matter. This letter contained 18 mathematical and physical arguments against heliocentrism. Primarily borrowing Tycho's arguments, the letter specifically wrote that heliocentrism requires stars to be much larger than the sun. The article, which also contained four theological arguments, led the Inquisition in 1616 to explain that heliocentrism was philosophically absurd and a heretical theory. Pope Paul V instructed Cardinal Bellarmine to convey this finding to Galileo and asked him to order a repeal of heliocentrism. On February 26, Galileo was summoned to Bellarmine's home and ordered to let go of the idea that the Earth is moving, with the Sun standing at the center of the universe, and not to say or write anything about it. The Directory Society banned Copernicus de Revolutionibus and other heliocentric works until corrected. Bellarmine's orders did not prevent Galileo from defending heliocentrism through mathematics and philosophy, but he was forbidden to accept it as a physical fact. For the next 10 years, Galileo avoided controversy. In 1623, he revived the project of writing a book on the subject, with Cardinal Maffio Barberini being the eighth urban and with his encouragement. 
Barberini was a friend and admirer of Galileo and challenged his conviction in 1616. Galileo's book, Dialogue on the Two Major World Systems, was published in 1632 with the permission of the Pope and the Inquisition. He asked Pope Galileo to write arguments for and against heliocentrism and not just defend it. He also wanted his views to be included in the book. Galileo only fulfilled the second request. Knowingly or unknowingly, the Aristotelian character Simplicio in the book has been fooled many times over and succumbed to his own mistakes. Although Galileo wrote at the beginning of the book that Simplicio was inspired by the famous Aristotelian philosopher, Simplicio in Italian also means fool. This is why dialogue appeared to be an attack on Aristotelian world centrism and a defense of Copernicanism. Also, Galileo angered him by writing the Pope's words in Simplicio's mouth. Many historians think that Galileo was not malicious and was surprised by the reaction to his book. However, the Pope did not forgive the public ridicule and the Copernican defense. Galileo was called to defend Rome, losing one of his biggest supporters. He came to Rome in 1633 and was brought to trial before Vincenzo Maculani. During his trial, Galileo said that he had not defended any of the forbidden ideas, keeping his word since 1616. He later admitted, however, that anyone reading the dialogue might think it was a Copernican defense. Although Galileo said that he did not defend Copernican ideas after 1616, this was not convincing. He continued this defense in July 1633, even under the threat of torture. The verdict of the Inquisition was given on June 22 and consists of three parts, the first of which is, that Galileo was seriously suspected of heresy and that he should condemn this idea and abandon it because he believed in the idea that the sun stood motionless at the center of the universe and the earth moved, even after it was found to be unbiblical. Latter, the Inquisition's incarceration, and finally, the third, it was decided to ban the dialogue and to ban the publication of his other works. According to a legend, after Galileo refuted the theory that the earth revolves around the sun, he uttered a sentence such as, but it still rotates. Staying with the Archbishop of Siena for a while, Galileo returned to his villa in Arce Tri, near Florence, in 1634 and spent his life under house arrest. He was ordered to sing seven penitent hymns once a week for three years, but his daughter Maria Celeste took on this task and saved her father. While under house arrest, Galileo wrote one of his most successful works, Two New Sciences. Here, he gave place to the work he had done 40 years ago and made explanations on kinematics and the strength of matter. This book has been praised by Albert Einstein. As a result of this work, Galileo has been called the father of modern physics. He went completely blind in 1638 and was allowed to go to Florence for medical attention due to complaints of insomnia and hernia. According to Dave Sobel, before Galileo's trial in 1633 and his verdict of heresy, Pope Urban VIII was concerned about his own security and state problems. Thus, the problem of Galileo was presented to the Pope by his enemies, and he attacked Galileo with anger and fear in the face of the claim that he had acted powerlessly in defense of the Church. Until 1642, Galileo received visitors. At the age of 77, January 8, 1642, he died of fever and palpitations. Grand Duke of Tuscany II Ferdinando wanted to bury him in the Basilica of Santa Croce and build a marble mausoleum in his memory. These plans were cancelled as a result of the opposition of Pope Urban VIII and his nephew, Cardinal Francesco Barberini, and Galileo's infidelity was put forward as the reason. So he was buried in a small room in one of the corridors of the Basilica. 
A monument was erected in his memory in 1737 and he was buried in the main site of the basilica. In this process, three fingers and one tooth were removed. One of his three fingers is now exhibited in the Florence Museum of the History of Science. By playing a major role in closing the Dark Age, that is, the Middle Age, in which humanity lived, and paving the way for the development of science, he managed to write his name in history with golden letters. Since you've watched it so far, you can click the subscribe button under the video and like the video, see you in the next video.